Hello and welcome to WP. Well, it's often been said that young people are the future and the Liberal Party says the time for young people in WA is now. As the state election nears, the party is putting forward commitments for young people to ensure they're represented and supported in years to come. We talked to the party's youth spokesperson, Tony Kristasevich, about what they're promising for young people. Oh, it's uh, definitely a difficult and tough election ahead of us. Uh, obviously, the Premier's popularity is difficult to combat, but it's disappointing that the Premier and the Labor Party isn't actually f fighting this election on policies. It's uh, hiding, trying to be a low, small target, and it's not really dealing with the important issues that affect every single Western Australian, and in this case, young people. Youth policies, for y especially for young adults, what can young voters expect from the Liberal Party? Oh, look, uh, obviously the future of this state, the future of this country is in the hands of our young people. And we know more than ever now they are struggling on many different levels. Uh, so there's a couple of things we've got out there at the moment. It's important, obviously, to have jobs for, of the future. And so we've got a, a policy there to try and build 200,000 jobs, to try and uh, be into emerging new industries, uh, whether it be environmental. Uh, and so it's really making sure that jobs are available for young people. We've also got a $200 million package, which is to do with apprenticeships and uh, traineeships to make sure that uh, you know, at least 20,000 apprentices are picked up. So that's also very, very important, especially at the moment with the shortage of apprentices. So we're putting money on the table so that people will, uh, will employ young people. We also know, obviously, that mental health is a big problem among young people. So we've put $316 million on the table to assist with mental health, uh, youth suicide, uh, and just focusing on, on, on those sort of issues. $80 million for that, uh, $76 million for school psychologists to try and uh, you know, help people at, in those early stages. We also know that homelessness is, is a problem for some young people as well. So we've put a package together of $57.5 million to make 500 beds available straight away so that young people can be taken out of vulnerable situations and put into a safe environment. What people see on the media, they felt that the Liberal Party has not been cooperative, has not been working with the government. That, that is not good press to a certain extent. Why, do you, why are you confident that young voters would choose you this time? Well, look, I think young voters need to look at the facts. We know that um, the Premier is popular, but when you dig a little bit deeper... So, for example, if you go back to March 2020, right at the start, when the then leader, Lisa Harvey, was saying the borders needed to be closed, we needed to defend Western Australians against the pandemic, Mark McGowan, Roger Cook and Ben White all came out and said it was a stupid idea to close the borders and that we can't do that for many different reasons. Obviously, then in National Cabinet, uh, other states and territories said they were closing their borders and off the back of their decision and our pressure, Mark McGowan then finally closed the borders for Western Australia. Mm -hmm. He then obviously did his internal polling, uh, spent uh, taxpayers' money to find out what was popular, found out closing the borders was popular and then continued down that path. Not because, uh, you know, we need to follow the Chief Health Officer's advice, that's very important, but initially he refused to do that. What's the difference between Labor and Liberal? Well, the difference uh, is, that I've seen over the last four years is that the Labor Party talk a big game that actually don't deliver anything. So there's been so many announcements that they've made over the last few years and not one cent of that money has been spent. Uh, it's all been sort of, uh, we'll announce it today, but we'll spend it in two years' time or somewhere in the forward estimates. So this needs to happen now. It needs to happen straight away. The problems are in our community right now and we can't afford to wait and we've got to treat this with you know, seriousness. On the other hand, when it comes to the, the policy itself, what's your call to the government? Well, look, I, I would like to see what Dave Kelly has to offer in the youth space. So I'm looking forward to him coming on your program and telling me what the Labor Party is offering our young Western Australians and to see whether that matches what we've got on the table here. And it's important for him to, to tell us that message and, and so that young people can make an informed debate. Do you believe young voters are well informed in this? No, I don't, unfortunately. I think, uh, you know, as we've seen regularly now, the government isn't about facts. It's, they're playing a small target. They're not trying to put any policies of any substance on the table. They're really, you know, the Premier thinks he's going to win the election off, off the back of his own popularity and off COVID and that the, de the details aren't important, but they are important because that's our future. And you won't go down without a fight? Oh, definitely not. OK, what about young voters? What can you assure them? Well, I can assure young voters that I am here to listen to their concerns and to fight for them. 
and that if they need something, all they need to do is knock on my door, uh, bring me on the phone, come and see me. Uh, I'm always available and I'm always here to assist. And I'm doing things at the moment in the electorate to try and make sure their lives are better. And now, here's AMA WA President Dr Andrew Miller with his COVID-19 commentary. Hi everybody, really important week in COVID for uh, one main reason, which is that uh, Professor Weeramanthri's report into the hotel quarantine outbreak in Western Australia showed that it was airborne spread. This is the first official government acknowledgement in Australia of airborne spread of the coronavirus in this pandemic. That changes everything because it now means that there is no excuse for not providing protection against the risk of airborne spread uh, in all workplaces and in aged care and in hospitals. So we now need to get on with that. And what does it mean? Well, it means we need to improve and upgrade ventilation. We need to be looking at issues like how many air changes per hour there are in each room. We need to be looking at uh, the carbon dioxide levels when you have people in rooms, making sure they're below 800 parts per million at all times. And we need to be providing respiratory PPE to protect them from airborne spread when people are looking after the COVID patients. If we do all of this, we can prevent the kind of uh, problem we saw in Victoria with the domino of the aged care uh, sector and then people coming into hospitals and causing the outbreaks in there because most of those unexplained events were caused by airborne spread. Makes sense, as, as the good professor said, that if you control for droplet spread and contact spread, and you don't control for airborne, that then becomes the major way that it gets around. So uh, we need to get on with this very quickly uh, because legally we're required to um, have protections, uh, all reasonable, practicable uh, protections against uh, known risks. And we'll be talking to WorkSafe about how they're gonna implement this now that the government in Australia have finally come out and uh, recognised it as an important risk to control. It's also time for the Infection Controls Expert Group at a federal level who've been um, obstructing and denying uh, this as being a problem that needs to be controlled. Uh, they need to be removed uh, because they've been uh, hampering, they've been a handbrake really uh, on our response. Uh, in addition to that, we see the um, AstraZeneca uh, virus vaccine has had its approval, uh, which is great. We want to roll out as much vaccine as we can in Australia. And it'll be really interesting to see hopefully next week the results of the big trial on that vaccine also in the US. Uh, the population at this stage, basically we need to make sure your Medicare details are up to date, your GP details are up to date, and uh, wait for the government's instruction around when it's your turn to roll up your sleeve. But uh, looking forward uh, to that program, really getting out there and, and starting to protect large parts of our very vulnerable community. Thanks for your time. That was Dr. Andrew Miller. And that's WP for this week. We'll be back again next time, but for now, it's back to you. Thank you, Nelson. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. For news anytime, go to our website, wamnnews.com.au. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and YouTube for the latest articles, press conference and videos. Until next Sunday evening, from Sarah and myself, I wish you good health and good night. Thanks for watching. <laughs>